Do you guys like Sonic? So it's come to my attention that over the past few years I've amassed a lot of Sonic stuff and when I lay it out, it's a lot more than I anticipated. I had that period where I was just like... I will admit I don't have everything that I'd like to have immediately with me. Uh, of course I gave some stuff away long ago and I don't think I'm gonna... I don't know if I'm gonna show everything. I just want to show some of the cooler stuff that I have and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I have a table amassed with a lot of my figures and I'm just gonna go like around the table and show you what I have. First off we have the Knuckles Superposer from Jazzwares. It was like 2010 when I got this guy. 2010 when he came out. Very nice. I actually had to buy another one because I tried a trick when I was a kid where it was like, oh, if you super glue the joints, you can actually make them tighter or less loose. And then I ended up breaking his arm off. So I had to get another one. Good times. Anyway, we have the Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Sonic RC car. I've lost the control to this guy, but sometimes he's just nice to drive around. You guys like cars? You like Sonic in a car? You excited for that new Sonic Racing game coming out later this year, hopefully? Me too. We have one of my personal favorites, the 10-inch modern Sonic. We were, I think that this has one of the best sculpts and just sort of designs out of any Sonic figure. It's giving you a little thumbs up. Yeah! And he, he's, just, he's a big boy. I don't think they've released a figure this tall ever since that one came out, because I think the tallest one's like 12 or 13 inches. And for my sealed, part of my sealed collection, we have this little big head boy Metal Sonic, the mini morphed. This was when like Jazzwares just lost the license, I believe. This is nice. I think I'm just going to keep him in his box because he looks good. We can't let the power be unleashed. That's a good reference, isn't it? What I think is my actual personal favorite figure for a lot of reasons is the 5 inch Sonic, the regular one, not the Black Knight one. The only thing I don't like is that it's difficult for him to stand, but when he does, it's nice. This is just, I like the way that he's stylized. It's not a complete likeness, but it's like, it gets the idea, what am I saying? It shows you that it's Sonic. And it looks nice, because this was originally a Black Knight styled figure. He had the gauntlet and Caliburn. There's his little smile if you can see it. But yeah, definitely, probably my favorite figure, this little guy. What's next on? Ooh, we have the Tails Superposer, which is like, I think this is the best figure of Tails yet. His sculpt is perfect. He has articulation in all the places he really should, as well as a few other special places. He's just super poseable. He stands perfectly. Like, okay, maybe not completely perfectly, but he's better at standing than all the other superposers. Oh yeah. I have Jet the Hawk from the Freeriders line. I lost his board a long time ago and I don't have his glasses no more. As you can see, he is blinded by the light. Or, you know, he's just... He's... Trying to hit that dab. I'm sorry for that. Um... Vector, I'm surprised I still have him because Vector's not my all-time favorite character, but this is just... This is the only Vector figure, guys. I know that there are a couple Vector plushes, but the only figure is this guy. And he has the big finger for which to put his finger in his nose, if he could reach it. I have, some of these are part of like a giant selfish thing, and I'm willing to save those for later. Um, one of the only Toy Island things I have is the... the you guys want the Super Space Fighter Metal Force Shadow? This wasn't even technically an arc in the anime. And gotta make the toys on it! This was actually given to me by my best friend, so I'm thankful for that. This is one of the few, like, Toy Island figures I own that wasn't re later rebranded by Jazzwares. So this is nice. Ex but except for, I, I don't like Shadow's head here. It's very funny. We have also, in terms of new, new stuff, we have the Tomy um, Mini Inch Modern and Classic Sonic. 
I... Okay, I'm gonna be honest here, I'm not sure how to feel about these figures, because their sculpts are nice for the most part, but their articulation is just... It feels to an extent non-existent, because they have very basic stuff like, you can move the arm, and maybe part of the leg. Well, I guess I was just spoiled by Jazzware so much. And like, I don't like how, if you can see, the legs, the, like the knee, kind of comes pre-posed. So if you're trying to make him stand in certain positions, it's not going to work out well. Y especially with modern Sonic, you have to pose him in a very specific way, because his shoes are kind of curved, where classic Sonics are just, like, flat. Oh, that's all me. And to go along with that, we have classic tails, very cute, and whatever this thing is. I, I do not like this figure. Look at it. His legs go all the way up to like his like his upper hip, like almost to his rib cage, where it be. He looks like a dork. He's looking like a Jaleel White looking guy. You weren't the one voiced by Sonic in 1993. Come on, Tails. And I just feel like he's too small. Like, he's only the slightest bit bigger than classic Tails. Uh, that shouldn't really be. Why, why did Sega allow that? Why did they say, this is a figure you can just put out? And we have both classic Supersonic and modern Supersonic from Jazzwares. I know that the Supersonic modern I got, his head is prone to falling off like that. But as you can see, they did not like put his head on very well. But these sculpts are nice, I actually like the mold they used for Supersonics here. What are these Supersonics? I wish you could stay on modern Sonic. They really do. Um, something a little bit out of the ordinary. This Sonic little bobblehead. I also know that they came in tails and knuckles. I got this guy in New York back in 2011, really cute. For one reason or another, he's just... I don't know. He's not my favorite, but I just kind of like having him around, you know? So technically my first four figures, I believe it was, but then like re-released for Jazzwares in the States, were these like little classic style figures. We got Tails, Knuckles, and Metal Sonic's head fell off, but yeah. Woo! These were really nice though. I definitely was glad that these came over to the States because they're pretty good considering their super small size. You mean the seven Chaos Emeralds or the three Super Hedgehogs? This was a pack that I was actually really glad was released. I never thought they'd do something like this, especially with like Super Shadow and Super Silver. These are probably the only figures of those variants we're gonna get. But these guys are pretty nice. We need more silver stuff, dude. The second half of those, like, little first four figures minis. Classic Amy, if she would stand up, and Sonic and Super Sonic. I will admit, the Sonic's eye looks a little bit strange, because I feel like the eye glow part is in a very odd space, but, you know, these guys look cute. I definitely like them. Um, figure of interest, which I, which actually a friend of mine picked up for me, is Nendroid Sonic. Now, this is the re-release, so he doesn't come with anything like the item capsule or the checkpoint, which is okay, okay, because I just wanted to have this guy in general. As long as he came with the figure itself and maybe one or two accessories, I couldn't care less. He looks really cute, and trust me, trying to get an original, like, print run of this guy, who that's expensive. It's like a hundred-something dollars. Oh, here's a special one. This is Rosaurus Tails. This was like 40 bucks and he was new in his box. I I kind of removed him from his box, but I still have that. I just wanted to, you know, he makes a good little desk buddy when you're working on stuff. He can move his arms and his wrists. His tails can move too, which is 
for a 1999 figure, maybe 2000. I'm surprised that they had that. And of course, that really nice bronze base. You guys like Shadow? I like Shadow too. I have like three variants of the three inch line or 3.75 inch Jazzwares line. Two of the regular ones that just have his like fisted hands right here. And then I have the one with like the sort of curled up hands for when he was on his motorcycle in Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. I don't even remember how I ended up with so many shadows. Do you remember when these guys were like five bucks? And you got them for great sculpt, great articulation, and it was just in general for like one of these guys. It was the perfect price. We have my man Silver over here. I don't have the Silver Super Poser actually, and he definitely goes for a pretty penny online. But this is one of my favorite three inch figures. It might be my favorite actually. I just like the way that he's sculpted. This was the first Silver figure ever released. It's just got nice details. And I have an earlier print run where the treads on his shoes aren't like colored in properly. That's gonna hurt, be hard to, hard to see. But yeah, like their little hexagons here are supposed to be blue. Very nice. Here we have the Werehog 5 inch line. Sonic Unleashed is my favorite Sonic game of all time. And I actually found this guy at a comic book store for like $7, which considering the price that Jazzwares figures go for, is really good. And again, he has some trouble standing because he's very top heavy. But this is still like a really neat figure and I'm glad that they made. Jazzwares made a lot of interesting things. Like a lot of interesting things. Like they had the, with the Werehog, they had an entire line of Black and White stuff. Um, Free Riders, an entire merch line for generations. Um, stuff for both Sonic All-Stars racing games. We got, I don't own it, but I wish I did, but we got a Sir Galahad, yeah, Galahad. The, like, Black Knight version of Silver. We gotta figure that. Guys, he's not even part of the main game. He's just a multiplayer character. Jazzwares did so many good things, and before they lost the license, they were gonna need to do even more cool stuff. Like, yo. Here we have some of the super posers. Uh, this is a like Jazzwares reprinted modern Sonic one. This is still one of my favorite figures because it kind of it's still using the mold from Toy Island, but I kind of like that. I like my Sonic's long and tall. I like his design here, and it was one of the last. I think it was one of the last things that used that like grin that he does that I personally love. I haven't seen any merchandise with Sonic like in terms of figures. I haven't seen much merchandise with him using it nowadays, which is a shame, because I like him. I like him when he grins. He's so precious when he smiles. And another one given to me by my best friend, and it's in kind of rough shape, but it still kind of functions, a shadow, like he's kind of leaning to the side, and this is a Toy Island version of it. You can tell by the positioning of the eyes and the fact that he still has the, like, little, uh, and it's in the black outline, because in the Jazzwares re-releases later on, they replaced it with a white to make him sort of go in, uh, instead of. Uh. Still really nice that I own like an original print run of this guy. Now, if I'm correct, the next sort of things we show up kind of go more in sets and stuff. But before we do that, actually, I totally just remembered we have a couple other things. I goes to show you how much I have. We have. The, one of the best figures released in this entire franchise. Look at this 10-inch Metal Sonic from Jazzwares. This is peak performance. I don't care what anyone says. This is absolutely incredible. They have every little detail from like his back engine, his legs, and his arms. Everything is just phenomenal about this guy, and he stands really well. If you can find this for an affordable price, whether it be boxed or not, get him, because this is mind-blowing. Sorry for the cutaway, I just had to get a few more figures before we move on to the sort of groups of stuff. But here we have the Sonic Happy Meal toy, or as they're calling it, Amiibo. 
I'm really glad to have this guy. He, he looks a little, little too chunky, but I'm okay with that for a figure of this size. And we have, like, one of the most recent things, which is something you also shouldn't pass up, is the ultimate classic Sonic from Tomy. Now, this is, this is Tomy at their best. I personally don't think that they're gonna release a figure as good as this guy, because he has everything. His posability is, like, on the level of Nendroids or Figmas and whatnot, or Play Arts and whatnot. But he can... He has so much articulation, and of course, he has all these little accessories. And they come with the little green hole stand where you can put them all in. Like, this is a good idea, and I wish they would do more things like this, like maybe give us a modern Sonic variant, maybe a Metal Sonic, Super Sonic. I'm not asking for, like, versions of every character, but just something for a bit more variety and for, you know, modern fans would be nice. And of course, the Sonic Mania Collector statue. Hey, Sonic, play him off. Mega! That's what it's all about. And of course, real quickly to go with that, we have the cartridge with the little golden ring. Well worth the $70, might I add. Now the next thing is we're going to be showing off kind of go more in sets or they're in a more like permanently sealed forever collection. Alright, now, or like super special items. Now we're going to start things off with the Joyride Sonic Adventure 2 Battle Sonic. Now I found this guy online for like 20 bucks loose and he came with a few other figures that I already had but like... 20 bucks for a Joyride Sonic, one that's not in awful condition, because this guy's in pretty decent condition. I had to do a little bit of cleaning and restoration, but he's still great. It doesn't come with any of his accessories, because it was a loose buy, but I couldn't have passed this up. I, the second I saw that eBay listing, went for it. He's just so well sculpted, and it's, it's cool, because we're probably never going to get a figure in this sort of style, like the adventure Yuji Oikawa style, which does suck, but, you know, I guess it makes this one all the more special. There we go. Now we have, in more of my sealed collection, Sonic and the Black Knight. Sonic in his, like, regular packaging, not the Black Knight exclusive one. We still have that sort of... I'm not too sure what I'd call that shape. But it's not like the more square rectangle one that Jazz Wars later ended up using. They even have like the Sonic Adventure styled art from their early days of like Jazz Wars early days. And the back of the box with the adventure artwork Yuji Uekawa style right here. It's really nice to have this because I never bought any figures that had this box in specific. So it's nice to have that like a sealed collection. And one of the cooler things we have, another cool thing we have of course because a lot of the stuff's cool, is the Sir Lancelot Shadow Sonic and the Black Knight figure, which again is really nice because Black Knight's actually one of my favorite Sonic games, and the fact that it got so much merchandise and for a couple of obscure characters is really cool. And this is, I believe, one of the error print runs because Shadow's or Lancelot's armor is supposed to be the pure silver, but it's purple for whatever reason. <laughs> but yeah, I just. And they released an Excalibur Sonic an Excalibur Sonic figure. We're never getting that again. I'm telling you, that, that... Good on you, Jazz Warriors. You did a lot of great things. And in terms of the figures, we're almost done, but I just gotta get a few more little guys here. All right, so thanks to that friend who gave me some of her shadow stuff, I actually have a complete line of Sonic X minifigures Wave 1 from Japan. These were sort of like the little mystery blind bag figures, and they come with a lot of the main Sonic X cast from like the first season or two. So we got Sonic, Tails, and of course these are done in like the Sonic X art style with that in mind. We have Knuckles, Amy, Amy. We have a Golden Sonic, which was supposed to be one of the like, chase figures. We 
have Dr. Eggman, if I can fit him here. We have God, or Big the Cat. We also have Cream. I'll put her right next to Amy, even if she'll kind of be lying down off camera. And then we have Chris Thorndike, one of the few figures ever made of him. We have... Ooh, we have Deco and Boko, Eggman's, like, underlings from Sonic X. And we have Cheese the Chow. You can tell by the little bow tie. So yeah, that's pretty much it for all of the figures. I don't think I have any more, but that's all like, what I wanted to show you guys. So that's it for the figures, and I'll meet you back here for plushes and other stuff. Stay tuned. Alright, now I don't have nearly as many plushes as I do figures, but I feel like the stuff I do have definitely makes up for it. We're going to start off with the Great Eastern Entertainment Classic Sonic plush, which was my very first plush ever. I, this guy has been through a lot with me. I've had him since 2009. Still one of my favorites in that principle alone. Next up to go with him, we have the Classic Tales from GE. Another really cute plush, and he's proportioned with Sonic, so that's nice, because not everything keeps that in mind. And it's not like a complete deal breaker, but it's nice when they pay that sort of attention to detail. Very cute. To go along with that, we have the Classic Knuckles. Very big-headed man. And then we have Amy. Classic Amy, or Rosie the Rascal. One of the few plushes in more recent times that has been more of her classic design, which is nice. My best friend also got me this little sonic one that makes some noises when you press his stomach. Yeah. Next up we have the Tomy 12-inch Classic Tails. Now this one blew me away because not only is he a great size but he's just so on model i i typically think that tomi's stuff is like just all right it's like good at best but not phenomenal for the most part but this tails plush is one of the exceptions a lot of pretty much everything is on par it's like on the on point I, I don't know why i'm struggling for words but yeah I have one of the little Sonic Boom emoji, plu emoji plushes, the Laughing Tails. These guys are so cute. I love these and I hope I can find more of them because I would definitely pick them up. In fact, if I ever got doubles of them, I'd probably put one of them in my car. Next up is a Behemoth, the 20 inch Great Eastern Shadow. I'm so glad I picked this guy up because I love him. This is a really, really neat plush. He has all the details and to be honest, I think that this and the Sonic Adventure 2 Shadow Plush from the Japanese set are the best Shadow Plushes ever made. And my personal favorite of all time plush is the Joyplus 15 inch Sonic. I picked this guy up, he was about 36 or 40 to 46 bucks, but he was definitely worth it. I wanted a modern Sonic plush that's like a bit bigger, not just like 8 inches. And since he's 15 inches, he's perfect, which is coincidental because that's his age. Sonic is 15. Really nice details on this plush. I want to do a brief little review of him in the near future. So yeah, that's it for plushes. Now we're going to move on to some miscellaneous stuff, not anything in a specific category. I, I have, I got these Sonic Swim Trunks a long time ago, and they still fit me. It's a testament to how much I've grown, which is not much at all. In fact, isn't it a bad idea to kind of sell Sonic swimwear? Because Sonic can't swim. You'd think that'd be bad karma, but eh. I also collect Sonic the Hedgehog hats, mainly like in the like baseball style. Here's one with a regular Sonic, and then he has a bunch of different artwork scattered through him. This is a personal favorite of mine. Had this for years. A few of these I've gotten from my friends. Here's a classic styled snapback. Sonic with the rings and stuff, and uh, a little classic logo on the back. I have one that kind of it kind of looks like a dad hat to me. It says "Speed King Rollin' Since '91." It's pretty simple and has a little bit of a white strap around here, but it's still nice and it gets the job done. 
And here we have a really cool one of a Sonic silhouette running, classic style Sonic, and uh, a little 16-bit ring. Again, in the snapback style. I kind of collect Sonic hats, and um, like I've said, and this, this is the ultimate. The, the Sonic Colors pre-order hat. Have you ever seen something so dashing? Get it? So as I mentioned in a video not too long ago, my friends actually threw me a Sonic themed birthday party for my 21st birthday. And I have some of the like stuff that the little party favors left over. Like here's the regular plastic cup with Tails, Sonic, and Shadow and no Knuckles. But come on, step it up. And here we have the mini like plastic cups with Knuckles, Sonic, Tails, and Shadow. Really cute stuff. And then we have one of each of the plates, the mini one, then we have a small napkin with the Sonic's head on the front, Tails' head on the back. We have some Sonic artwork in the big napkin as well as Tails and Knuckles. And then we have the big plate with the boys. And to top it all off, we have Sonic Pinata. It's perfect. These next items are also recent additions to my collection. We got big boys over here. We have the Sonic Adventure Vinyl Edition soundtrack. And the listing for all the different sides. Picture of perfect chaos and the lyrics to open your heart. And of course, to accommodate that, we have the Sonic Adventure 2 vinyl. Put back. And when you open it up, it has a bunch of sitters of pictures of City Escape, as well as the lyrics to the city to escape from the city. This is probably the least expensive thing in my collection, but this sticker set for Sonic Generations that was given off at Tokyo Game Show 2011, it was 50 cents, and I love these. Oh boy, do you guys like Sonic comics? I haven't, like, read all of them, but I have definitely gotten into the habit of collecting them, as you saw from one of my videos. Now, to start things off, we have... Let's go from IDW back all the way to Archie, because I have a lot more Archie than I do IDW, of course. So we have a, just, just a regular print of Sonic 1. And then we have the regular printing of Sonic Issue 2. And then we have, I believe this is the Tyson Hess cover art for... Yeah, so we have Tyson Hess Issue 2, Issue 3... And issue four. I was trying to get my hands on the issue one Tyson Hess cover art so I can have that perfect line. But I'll get around to getting that eventually. It's not like a super expensive variant like the Rafa Knight one or the regular retail one. But um, so Sonic Comics. I got a lot of these from my friend who like needed to get rid of their collection and they had almost everything from Archie Sonic which was really cool. I got a lot of the variant covers because I just like the like I like the three I like, I like when they make the CG artwork or when Tyson Hess is involved. We have Sonic Universe issue 61. We have Sonic Universe issue 70. Knuckles and Rouge on the Sky Sanctuary. We ooh one of my personal favorites. Anyway, one of my personal favorites, and speaking of Rafa Knight, Sonic issue... What issue is this? It's one of the issues, but it's um, one of the part of Worlds Unite. It's her 3D render of Amy vs. Honey and Sonic the Fighters. I call next game! Really, really beautiful artwork. Oh, and more Rafa Knight. We have the Sonic issue 266, the Sonic Smash variant. Oh, that the way there's going to be an, an issue, I can tell. Sonic Unleashed's variant for Sonic 264, one of my personal favorite covers. 
we have the Sega variant of issue 252. Um, Sonic issue 232. Sonic issue 186. Sonic 171. Sonic 166. Okay, this bugs me. Look at how wilted Shadow's quills are. What is that? I don't like that. The Shadow, fix your quills, boy. We have an issue, a copy of issue 165. Sonic's eyes always struck me as weird here. They're like, they, they almost look like glasses. Like, the, the sclera almost looks like glasses. I don't know, it's just that style gives that to me. Sonic 163. Sonic 150. Sonic issue... Oh, this is... This is issue 2. Kind of in rough condition, but it's still, like, not destroyed. Really cool stuff. Sonic issue 71. I was really interested in this one, because this is how Archie explained the... Um, from the classic design to the adventure design. It's a really weird, very... I think it was like an Inception-style comic, where you had to read it from back to forward. We have Sonic X Issue 3. Sonic X Issue 7. Two copies of Sonic Free Comic Book Day comics from when Archie was, of course, still in charge. I'm not sure what years those are in specific. Oh, and another copy of Sonic X Issue 7. We have the... Sonic Hero comic from Sonic Team, which was part of the Tales and Classic Tales Tomy 2 pack figures. Sonic Universe issue 75, which is the classic Sonic and modern Sonic figure pack from Tomy. Sonic Universe issue 28, my boy Silver getting his own art. Sonic X issue 13. Oh yeah, another issue of Sonic 165. A copy of Sonic 225. Stupid player. Sonic Genesis Part 1. One of my favorite cover arts. And then of course, Sonic Genesis Part 2. And those were the only ones I had for Sonic Genesis initially. But I also have the Sonic Generations Sega variant for Sonic 230. Very nice stuff. We have the adventure variant of Sonic 265, the Werehog busting out the moves. Very nice. And one of my other favorite comic covers is is issue 270. It is a... Is this Jasmine Hernandez? I think it is Jasmine Hernandez, but yeah. With Sonic, Tails, Amy, and Knuckles. Really nice. The Super Smash Brothers variant for Shadow of Sonic Universe issue 69. All I need to do is find the Mega Man comic that has him like using the Foy Knuckle or whatever it was called. I don't like Mega Man, I'm sorry. Because I want to complete that like combo. And for regular comics, the last of them is issue 59, the variant edition. It's just called variant edition. Shadowfall, part one of four. And in terms of like bigger compilations, we have Sonic Genesis, the complete story. Really nice image of Super Sonic. Sonic Super Special Issue 2. I always like that cover art of Super Sonic as well. Sonic Select Book 9, The Games. Sonic, Sonic and... At least Sonic kind of strikes me as the guy who would play PlayStation over Xbox. Those are like PS2, PS3 controllers. I also like Omega on this cover too. Omega, how do we beat this boss? I am reading, calculating, calculating. I can't read. This is why we don't invite the game night, Omega. And the Sonic Legacy series, book two. Look at how thick this boy is. Dang, son. 
So that actually does it for the comics. All right, now we're gonna have not that much more time, but I will go over the soundtracks and the games and maybe some other things like shirts and posters. First of all, we have Sonic Generations Blue Blur, the full soundtrack of Generation, signed by June Sonoy earlier this year, actually. Classic Sonic and the song listings. I'm so glad I could finally pick this up. This is one of my favorite video game soundtracks of all time. We have a sealed copy of Planetary Pieces, the Sonic Unleashed soundtrack, or as it's known in Japan, Sonic World, World Adventure. Some really nice stuff. That glare is going to death on me. We have Sonic Lost World's original soundtrack, as it's also called Without Boundaries. I still have the shrink wrap in it, but all, all the all the Zeddy, they're, they're piling up and it freaks me out. Now, I believe that unfortunately this is a bootleg or off-brand copy of Sonic Adventure 2's multi-dimensional soundtrack. Because I can tell, like, when I, I've seen more official ones, they're like the more thick ones, like the ones that are that thick, this was this thick. So it's kind of a shame that I don't really have the real deal, per se. But I'm still glad because this has everything in really good quality. The hero and the dark side and whatnot. So, for that sense, I'm grateful for it. And, I well, honestly, just because of the way it looks, the one I've been obsessing over, the Sonic Forces A Hero Will Rise soundtrack. Now, this is, of course, a Japanese print because they just put up a English ver an English version of this on the Sega shop, which you should definitely check out for yourself if you're interested in getting more Sonic collection stuff. A little bonus, the Sonic Generations sort of like 20 years of making of soundtrack, you fold it open, are the two Sonics, and then we have a documentary detailing the history of Sonic, a quick little overview, and 20 years of Sonic music, and a lot of this is like the first level of like a lot of the games, like yeah, uh, like Palm Tree Panic from Sonic CD, Toxic Cave from Sonic Spinball, um, Quick Trip to Paradise from Sonic Rivals, which is actually a really good one. Yeah, it's like the first level to every Sonic game. Well, not every one, of course, but you, you get the idea. And before we get to games, because this could fit in both categories, possibly one of my favorite pieces of uh, merchandise I own is the 10th Anniversary Sonic Adventure 2 Sonic Birthday Pack, signed, of course, by June Sonoy. And if you're not familiar, because I'm trying not to, like, damage it, of course, um, this comes with, this is only available on the market for, I believe, two days, and they were free. I'm not too sure about the free part, that's just what I've heard. But this comes with a Japanese copy of Sonic Adventure 2, a commemorative little collectible coin, and it comes with a soundtrack from a song, that have songs from Sonic's 1, 2, 3, Knuckles, CD, R, Adventure, and Adventure 2. Like a sort of select compilation of them. And it also comes with a little booklet history the his, detailing the history of Sonic from like 1991 to of course 2001 when this was released. A really cool piece of history. And sorry about that guys, but before we get into games I do have a few DVDs. I have season one of The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. A lot of good memories just waking up during middle school or high school when I'm off and plopping this in. Good memories. Then we have the entirety of Sonic Set AM. Fun fact, um, this actually appears on Stars Encore, on one of the channels that you get if you get like super premium cable and stuff. And sometimes my dad will actually sit down and watch, him, watch an episode with me. Really cute. And then we have the Chaos and Shadow Sagas from Sonic X. This was like when they adapted the plots of Adventure 1 and Adventure 2. Personal favorite of mine. And then a friend of mine, when she was clearing out her collection, gave me um, another version of the Sonic Adventure 1 ad adaptation, Revenge of the Robot, so like Gamma and whatnot. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, Sonic's predominantly about video games, right? Anyway, I have a bunch of this stuff. I'm shrouded in Sonic stuff, which, fine by me. But I have a lot of games here, of a few special imports and whatnot, and I don't have every game with me right now, 
because I don't have a copy of Shadows game anymore, for example, and I don't have the Rush games on hand, but I definitely do have a lot of few things. A lot of things, actually. Just gonna get two other things from behind here. <laughs> now, I thought I'd start off with my very first Sonic game, Sonic Advance on the Game Boy Advance, and this is my original copy, so it's damaged to hell, but it still works, actually. I tried it a few days ago. It's fun as ever. I would love another Advance game, dude. And to go along with that, a copy of Sonic Advance 2. I have a copy of Advance 3 lying around here. But yeah, let's get into all the other games. I just thought that Advanced 1 deserved an honorable mention because it's like my very first Sonic game. We have the original Sonic, or my favorite Genesis game, not for resale. So underrated, dude. We have a copy of Sonic 2 to go along with it. And of course, Sonic 3. And Knuckles. I actually don't have the box for N Knuckles, unfortunately. But besides that, yeah, all, of, all three Genesis games and whatnot. Well, the main ones, of course. I also have a copy of Sonic Adventure, which was my first 3D Sonic game. And it's signed by the members of the Sonic Adventure Music, ex music Experience. Um, of course, Jun Sonoi, Takashi... Like... Oof. Takashi Tanaga. Yeah, Takashi Tanada. I don't know why I just blanked that name. And Act. The box is kind of rough, but it still symbolizes so much good things. Good stuff from a good era. And Sonic Adventure 2, which is actually signed by Lisa Ortiz, who is the four kids voice actress for Amy. And is coincidentally my favorite Amy. We have... Hmm. We have Sonic and the Black Knight. One of, again, my personal favorite Sonic games. Signed by June. And he actually has said that the most difficult game to make music for was for Black Knight. We have a Japanese sealed copy of Sonic Jam for the Saturn. I personally love the way that the Saturn games are like shown off in Japan. Because like this sort of gold border and the logo is just gorgeous. Oh. Yeah. And the back too. We have a copy of Sonic CD. North American version. You open it up, and Sonic is in a CD. Good stuff. Sonic Rider Zero Gravity, one of the best Sonic racing games in my eyes. I'd probably say third best. That's just me. And it's my favorite Sonic Riders. Sega Superstars Tennis on the Wii. My best friend got this for me. Thank you. You know who you are. And here we have a copy of Sonic Colors. And inside is actually signed by Chugga Conroy when he played through colors. All I did was press A. And it's beat to hell, but a copy of Sonic Heroes back when GameStop actually properly sold GameCube games. I probably should get a better box for this, but eh, this will do, because eh, the game plays. A sealed copy of Sonic 2 for Game Gear. It's like that story about that guy who bought a copy of this in 2018, like, fresh, brand new. That's a legendary story, to be honest. I like it. And we're heading into PlayStation 3 games. We have Jacksepticeye's favorite game, Sonic 2006. I've actually been working on a Let's Play with this on a, for my friend's channel. I'll probably plug them right here or down there. But yeah, definitely check them out. Screwhead Media. Um, my favorite Sonic game of all time, as I probably mentioned earlier, Sonic Unleashed for PS3. Then we have Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. Fantastic game. One of my most influential games of all time, Sonic Generations. This is one of the few games that I've actually 100%ed, both in terms of like in-game stuff and for like <laughs> trophies, achievements and stuff, even when I had it on 360. And Sonic All-Stars Racing Transform. I, I cannot wait for that new Sonic Racing game, guys. I want to see footage of it. And especially if I can, you know, play as Silver or Infinite, that'll be good. What else am I missing here? Um, I have two copies of Sonic Forces, both on PS4 and Switch. I have copies of Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 on the Game Gear for Japanese, for Japan. Really cute little box arts. I'm trying to clutter through the rest of these games to make sure there's anything I haven't missed. Oh, I know I have Sonic Mega Collection on GameCube somewhere. It's 
probably deeper in my house somewhere probably and of course i have mania sonic mania on both the switch and playstation 4 but if i'm correct that does just about does it for games oh and i'm sorry about that i have sonic adventures 1 and 2 on both pc and ps3